Once we have our drawing set up, it'll be time to print. So let's go ahead and look at the process by which Revit allows us to print. And we can find that underneath the big R up here in the upper left-hand corner. So go ahead and click on the R, come down, and there's going to be an option here for print. And we'll move over here and just select on print off of the menu. Once we do that, we're going to see our standard print menu pop up here. And you'll have whichever printers that you're usually using show up here on the list. In this case, I have an Adobe PDF printer, and I'll just use this as an example. The first button that we'll see over here is going to be the Properties button. Now, I'm not going to select on this, and the reason is that everyone's properties is going to look different. If you select on that Properties, this is going to give you the properties related to your specific printer that's sitting at your desk. All right, so if you would select on that, you'll see any properties that might be related to it. Now, the properties that really directly affect Revit are going to be in the Settings button down here, and there's going to be an option here to select on Setup. So go ahead and click on Setup. Once you do that, it's going to tell you that these settings are related to whichever printer it is that you're currently working with. We'll also see that there's options related to different paper sizes. Now, once again, these paper sizes are going to be related to the specific printer that you're printing to. In this case, I just have a lot of the standard everyday sizes related to an Adobe PDF. If you have a big plotter set up with 24 by 36, 30 by 42 kinds of sheets, then those settings will show up here on the paper sizes. I think we're all familiar with orientation as far as portrait and landscape. This is your standard everyday Windows functionality over here. There's paper placement. Now, everybody sort of has a different way to go about doing this, and really I find that this is usually a printer-specific sort of thing. In the case of my Adobe PDF, I usually just center it. On the other hand, if I'm printing to a normal plotter, or if I know that I'm going to be placing the sheet of paper into my plotter in a certain spot, then usually I'll do an offset from corner and say that I want my drawing to print a certain margin away from the outside edge of the piece of paper. There's zoom. Zoom is probably the one area where people make their biggest mistakes. They'll tend to forget that fit the page is the default, usually, unless this happens to be saved, and they'll leave fit the page. Then after their entire set has been printed, they'll come in, they'll look at it, and then they'll put a little scale down next to it. They'll do their measurement and wonder why this is about 98, 99% of the size that it should be. The reason is that they forgot to change this from fit the page down to zoom. And usually if I'm going to be doing a print, I usually come down here and set my zoom to 100% of the size, which means it's going to print at a full size, full scale, and it's not going to try to fit it to a sheet of paper. Pretty much the only time that I ever use fit to page is if I just want to do a little check set, I don't really care what the scale is, then I'll say fit the page and it'll automatically fit to whatever the paper size shows up up here at the top of the screen. Usually I tend to leave over here where it has hidden line views and it says vector processing. I usually leave vector processing the way that it is, particularly if I have newer hardware. It just usually works a little bit better for us. The one exception to that, though, is if you start noticing inconsistencies in your printing. The next area down here is going to be appearance, and we can see that there's a variety of different options here. Personally, I almost always just print to high. I haven't found a massive difference in print time speeds. You could print to medium. I probably wouldn't recommend low. I usually don't use presentation work unless I'm trying to print images. So for the most part, I just leave it on either medium or on high. Personally, I usually leave it on high. Not everybody realizes, at least if you first start using Revit, that in fact Revit will print color. If you want to be able to print color, just leave it as being color here. Usually, though, I find most people either do black lines or grayscale. And I usually start by trying black lines and see how it prints. It'll still print different shades of gray, so I'm not too concerned about that. Your line work will still look okay. But I know other companies that use grayscale, and it really comes down to your printer and whatever you're going to get the best results from your printer. So start off by trying black lines. If it doesn't look the way that you like, try grayscale and just sort of maybe print the same page and see which one looks better for you. Last thing before I click on OK to this is there are some options that show up down here. Usually just leave these alone. These are pretty much the default settings that everybody else uses. But I will say that if you start having certain things suddenly show up on your prints, certain things are suddenly vanished on your prints, and you're thinking to yourself, why is this suddenly showing up? Take a look down here at options and make sure that these checkboxes pretty much show up the same way that they show up here on this screen. If they do, then more than likely you'll get the kind of prints that you expect. If you start losing stuff, gaining stuff, it's probably because one of these checkboxes have either been unchecked or they've been checked. 
see right before I click on OK, there's one more button I want to show, and that's the Save As button. Once you have all of your settings the way that you like it, you can click on Save As, and then you can give this a name, and this name can be anything that makes sense for the kind of print that you're getting ready to do. In this case, I'll just go ahead and just leave it as being Adobe PDF, and I'm just going to call it Example. You can call yours anything that would make sense for the kind of print that you want to do. I'm going to click on OK to this. And now we can see that the name of this setup, these settings, is Adobe PDF Example. And if I ever come back and choose this off of the list again, any changes I would have made will now just suddenly show up as soon as I pick it off of the pull-down list right here. Now I'll go ahead and click on OK. And we can see that those are the settings that are going to be used. Truthfully, the way I usually do my naming convention here is I usually do this for printer name as well as the size sheet of paper that's getting ready to get printed. So it could be A size, B size, C size, you get the idea. And it'll have all those settings appropriately for that kind of plot. Now the last area to talk about is going to be over here in the print range. Now current window does exactly what it sounds like. It's going to print whatever window is currently open. Thing is though, it's going to print everything. Even if you can't see it on the screen, if there's something way up here that's been drawn, it'll print everything from this window. The visible portion of current window will print only those items that are on the screen. So if there's something drawn up here and you can't see it on the screen, it won't print. There's also selected views and sheets. This is the one that I tend to use the most often. And by selecting on the select button, we can see the view and sheet sets. And what this allows us to do is we can put check marks next to any view that we want to be able to print. If we want to be able to print just the views, then we can clear out the sheets and we'll only see the different views. If we want to be able to just see the sheets, we can just put a check mark next to sheets and then we'll just see the sheets up here on the list. Then you put check marks next to those sheets or those views that you want to be able to print. And then you can do a save as. You can give it a name, and then the next time that you want to be able to print those same sheets, all you have to do is select it off of the list up here, and you'll get that same listing with all the proper sheets and views checkmarked. So when it comes time to print, they'll all print as a batch, and you can send them to the printer just one right after another. The only limitation this has is that it does need to be all the same size sheet of paper. So the reasoning behind that is, and I'm going to hit cancel because I don't really want to save this, I'm going to hit cancel again. The reasoning behind that though is that here underneath settings, you've specified which size sheet of paper you're going to be printing to. And by printing a range, it's going to always try to print to that same size sheet of paper as what showed up underneath your settings. It's important to remember that when printing, you verify such things as scale and which sheets you actually want to print. Once you do that, you should have a lot of success in printing whatever you need.